So the topic for this video is the drug ranitidine. So first thing to say, the name Zantac is also often used for ranitidine. This is the original brand name for the drug ranitidine. Of course, it's off patent now, so there's loads of generic ranitidine available. However, the original branded ranitidine Zantac is still available, um, and it's a quite nice name, and some people will use this instead of the full generic drug name. So the function of ranitidine, the reason people take this drug is to reduce the acidity of the stomach. So the stomach produces acid, the lining of the stomach produces acid that is secreted into the lumen of the stomach and helps to break down the food that we ingest. Sometimes, for a variety of reasons, people have problems with too acidic conditions within the stomach. When the contents of the stomach becomes too acidic, it can irritate the lining of the stomach, it can burn the lining of the stomach, and it can irritate slash burn the lining of the adjoining parts of the GI tract also. So the esophagus above, acid, acidic contents can uh, reflux back up into the lower portion of the esophagus and irritate that bottom portion of the esophagus and also of course contents is going to flow from the stomach into the first part of the duodenum through the pyloric sphincter and again if the contents is too acidic that is going to irritate potentially even burn the wall of the duodenum and uh, this problem leads to uh, pain in the stomach region in the region of the lower esophagus felt as lower chest pain um, and in the region of the duodenum, which again is upper abdominal pain. So I've written down here a nice term that we use in medicine, which is epigastric pain. So epi means around, gastric means stomach. So this is pain in the region or the vicinity of the stomach. And really when people write this in medicine, let's say they've written it in the patient's notes, the patient is currently complaining of epigastric pain. It's a synonym for the patient is suffering pain that is caused by too acidic contents within the stomach irritating the wall of the stomach or irritating the wall of the surrounding parts of the GI tract to the stomach, so the lower portion of the esophagus or the first part of the duodenum. And as I've said, pain from the stomach or from the first part of the duodenum is going to be felt in the upper portion of the abdomen and typically it's a sort of achy, nori upper abdominal pain, not too severe but not comfortable at all and it can, the more severe it is the more uncomfortable it will be but it's not a horrific pain usually. Uh, and pain in the lower portion of the esophagus is felt at the bottom portion of the chest uh, and it's what we refer to as reflux uh, and it's one of those things that when people experience it for the first time potentially and don't, or if they experience it for the first time really badly and don't realise what it is, they can get quite worried because the pain is usually felt over the region where the heart is because of course the lower portion of the esophagus is behind the heart. So when it's irritated, it that the pain you feel is usually, usually over the portion of the, the, the portion of the chest that is over the heart. So people can worry that this pain is coming from their heart. However, the pain is very different in reflux compared to cardiac pain. So reflux pain is generally either an ache, it can be sharp or it can be burning, uh, felt in the deep inside the chest over the region where the heart is. Uh, whereas cardiac pain is described as a crushing uh, pain as though someone is trying to crush the inside of the heart. Um, and whilst reflux, usually, unless it's extremely severe, the person will be able to continue on with their day. They might not be particularly comfortable, but they'll be able to continue on with their day as normal. Whereas ischemic cardiac chest pain is so severe that it usually grinds the person's life to a halt, i.e. it takes all of their attention away from their daily activities and all of their attention is fixed on this pain. It really is a, you know, I'm doomed kind of pain, cardiac pain, whereas reflux is more a achy, potentially sharp, potentially burning uh, pain that doesn't make you think that you're doomed usually when you experience it. 
So I've just written down here some of the reasons that people can end up with a too acidic stomach. Now, we're not going to go into these in detail. We're just going to talk about them briefly. There are other reasons as well, but these are two of the most common. So one reason is fasting. So we, most people, eat three meals a day, and that's very nice for the stomach because when you eat food, that food neutralizes the acid in the stomach. The acid is taken up by the food and it's neutralized by it. That's what the acid is for, to help digest the food. So if you give it food to digest, it's used up. Whereas if you don't eat for an extended period of time, let's say you go on a fast for 24 hours, that acid doesn't have anything to digest and then can accumulate in the stomach and uh, the stomach can become too acidic and then it can start irritating the stomach and its surrounding structures. So that is one of the commonest reasons for people to experience this sort of epigastric pain, reflux or upper abdominal pain. The other reason is medications. And we're not going to go into specifics here, but there are loads of different drugs which all increase acid production by the stomach uh, and uh, or or alternatively stop the neutralization of stomach acid and therefore result overall in the acidity of the stomach becoming more so. Um, so loads of medications can cause this problem, epigastric pain as a side effect. So epigastric pain is a very common problem. Just a quick word about how it can become dangerous. So the stomach acid can actually erode through the surface of the stomach or through the surface of the duodenum or through the surface of the esophagus uh, and lead to ulcers. And these are potentially very dangerous. They can bleed and you can lose a huge amount of blood into the GI tract or they can potentially perforate, which can be life-threatening. Uh, so ulcers is how having a too acidic stomach can become dangerous. Now, most people... Uh, too high stomach acidity doesn't progress to this. It just causes uh, chronic sort of pains. Uh, but this can potentially become very dangerous, especially if you're on medications that lead to increased acidity of the stomach. So there's the explanation then for why it's very important to have medications that are capable of reducing the acidity of the stomach. So I've written up here, these are the three main types of medications that are used to decrease stomach acidity. So we are interested in H2 receptor antagonists because ranitidine is in that group. But let me firstly also say that you can have medicines that just directly neutralize the acid. We call these antacids, uh, short for antiacids. They are usually preparations that contain calcium carbonate, which is chalk, which goes down and neutralizes the acid directly. So in the UK, these are all available over the counter. So things like Gaviscon, Rennies, uh, these are things that people can buy over the counter. They're literally chalk tablets, uh, flavored chalk tablets. They often have sweetener in and mint uh, flavorings uh, and you chew them and then you it becomes like a powder in your mouth and you drink a glass of water and all of that is washed down down your esophagus into your stomach and it neutralizes one the stomach acid that might be in the esophagus and irritating the lower esophageal wall and then once it's in the stomach it will help neutralize acid down there and reduce any irritation down there as well so antacids they're over-the-counter medicines we can prescribe them as well and they work extremely quickly by directly neutralizing acid then there are two other types of medicines H2 receptor antagonists and PPIs. These, instead of neutralizing the acid, they work on the cells of the stomach wall and they reduce the production of stomach acid by those cells. Now, PPIs are probably more effective than H2 receptor antagonists. There are loads of examples. I've recently made a video on one of the most famous examples, the meprazole. They all end in prazole. So meprazole, lanzoprazole, ezomeprazole, pantoprazole, rabeprazole. They're all the examples. Some of those are available over the counter, uh, at least in the UK I'm talking about. I don't know about what the arrangements are in other countries. I know some countries have much wider ranges of medicines that are available over the counter than the UK does. Uh, but in the UK, um, ezomeprazole is the main one that's available over the counter as Nexium, uh, whereas other ones are prescription only medicines. H2 receptor antagonists, there are multiple examples of this. Ranitidine is by far the most used and most famous example, but another example would be Cimetidine. Ranitidine is available over the counter easily. You can buy it in supermarkets, or at least it was. We'll come on to what's happened to ranitidine recently in just a moment. 
uh, but it used to be available over the counter and it used to be available on prescription as well.